it's Rowan and today we're going to be talking about vaginismus. What is vaginismus, you ask? Well, here is the NHS definition. A current or persistent involuntary tightening of muscles around the vagina whenever penetration is attempted. Another definition, it is the spasmodic contraction of the vagina in response to physical contact or pressure. What does that mean in practice? Well, actually the symptoms for vaginismus vary wildly between different people. So some people it's like Fort Knox up there, nothing's getting in. Some people can maybe get a tampon in but wouldn't be able to have penis in vagina or PIV sex. Some people can have PIV sex but it is extremely painful. So there are a couple of reasons why I wanted to make this video. One, this is a condition that I have. So fair warning, you're about to hear much more about my genitals than you ever wanted to before so get ready for that. And two, this is something that the more I talk about with people in real life, the more I realise how common it is, but how much people are not talking about it. So hopefully this video is something that will be useful, or interesting to you, and something that you can share with people in your life that you think might need to hear about it. Chapter one, the first time Rowan tried to put something in her vagina. So like with most people who have vaginas, the first thing was a tampon. Um, this is something that I wasn't that worried that I couldn't get in at the time. I started my period when I was 11. Uh, this was kind of given to me as a selection box from my mother. So I had pads, tampons, all that jazz. And um, I think there's this cultural idea that you kind of start with pads and you graduate to tampons. At the time I was kind of like, oh fair, I can't use it. But you know, maybe when I'm 13 I'll try again. But I think it's also worth noting that this is the time of your life when you start to really be talking about sex and sexuality and virginity and stuff like that. Um, because when you talk about virginity, as someone who has a vagina, when you lose it it's very much like it's going to be painful and awful and you're going to bleed everywhere and it's not going to be fun for you whatsoever. And so I know a lot of people who have had sex the first few times and not realise what was wrong because there's just this assumption that if you have a vagina, sex will be painful. I think it's also very telling that one of the main causes, if you look up vaginismus listed, will be sexual trauma. The idea that, you know, if someone goes to punch you, even if they don't actually punch you, you have a physical response. You have like a tensing or a flinching back response. So the idea is, if you've had sexual trauma in your past, then you are gonna have this involuntary response um, to what is perceived as being similar to that act. And I don't think that there's an insignificant amount of people who have not had a physical trauma, but the idea of, and the expectation of sex being traumatic could potentially have an effect here as well. Chapter two, other things Rowan has tried to put inside of her vagina. So I periodically kept trying to use tampons and it wasn't working. And I was kind of a bit like, well, all my friends are using them. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. So I had a little rummage with my fingers. Um, and for me, I'm very much the Fort Knox type. So nothing is getting in there. It literally feels like there's a wall there, that kind of like textured wall, it's very um, uncomfortable. It feels a bit like touching raw skin. So this is the part where we talk about something that I think a lot of people have experienced with vaginas, which is um, how the medical profession sometimes is not the best at dealing with them. So I've left some links below to do with how um, there's sometimes an underfunding of women's health um, and also sometimes a devaluing of women's pain. So the idea that doctors, especially male doctors, won't believe women when they talk about how much pain they're in, which is linked a lot to gender stereotyping. Um, so I went and without fail, when I go to doctors about this, and even once I was diagnosed and said, I have vaginismus, this isn't gonna happen, they still insist on attempting to shove things into me, which is not good in any way, shape or form, especially as something which the main cause is sexual trauma to kind of potentially re-traumatize people every time they go to the doctors, which is a place that's meant to be helping them, is not helpful. That disbelief, which I think is something that's really difficult when you're dealing with something that is so nebulous and so difficult because it's not something you can see and it's involuntary. So it's important to note that people can be the most aroused they've ever been. They can be with partners that they completely trust. They can be alone, having fun. They can be in any situation and this will happen. It's completely outside of their control and therefore it's outside of their knowledge a lot of the time. Now I think it's important to talk about causes because it's also then important to talk about treatments. So if you know the cause then the treatment maybe becomes a bit more obvious but if the cause is always sexual trauma or seen as sexual trauma the treatment becomes things like therapy to get over your sexual trauma. But if you don't have sexual trauma, how can you go through therapy? Another, what I find hilarious with the kind of vaginismus I have therapy that's kind of offered is a physical therapy where they just give you dildos. That's the therapy. And they're very small, some of them, but I'm like, if I can't get a pinky finger in there, 
how do you think I'm gonna be just like using these various size, what they're called dilators? So there's kind of like a lack of treatment. And I think that I have been extremely lucky in that I do not need or want treatment for anything other than medical reasons. So obviously you can't have a smear test or a pap test when you have this because you, nothing can get in there. For me, I don't really mind not using tampons. Um, I am queer and therefore have a different relationship to penis and vagina sex, I think, than a lot of straight and cis people do. But I do know that there are a lot of my friends who don't necessarily want penis and vagina sex, but there is this idea and this pressure that that is what you sort of have to do. And that if you can't do that, then somehow you failed as a woman sexually. This is something that is like needed to fulfill you, even if you don't necessarily enjoy it. And I think that's a lot to unpick. So the queerness for me works out because when you're dealing with two different people who don't have the expectations of the main event in bed is going to be that you put this body part inside of me and that is going to be the kind of the be all and end all of sex for us it means that there's often a lot more communication um if you're with people who are trans or non-binary or have any kind of gender dysphoria then you also need to talk about which body parts they're comfortable with being touched in particular ways and so that open communication means that Absolutely, you can say, I don't want anything inside my vagina. And they're like, sweet, that's totally fine. We can do other stuff. The kind of straight and cis friends I have who have this condition where it feels like it's a ticking time bomb. It feels like they won't be loved. It feels like their relationships will all fail. It feels like men will never love them unless they fix this inside themselves. As opposed to being like, sweet, this, is, this isn't this is my manifest destiny to have something inside of my vagina at any and all times. I am totally fine with not having that. I can still have a fulfilling sexual relationship and so can my partner we just won't do it in that very particular way. Which, to be honest, for me, regardless of how you identify in terms of gender or sexuality, feels like a much more healthy response, personally. And I kind of wish that that was there. I feel like this heteronormativity, the idea of like, this is what the norm is and this is what you have to do as a requirement, means that there are probably a lot of people who are forcing themselves to do things that they don't necessarily want to do because that's what they're told they need to want. So before we end, a quick recap as to what is going on with my vagina at this point in my life, especially for people who think or do have vaginismus and are worried about how much it might negatively affect their lives personally. Um, I cannot use tampons or moon cups still, nothing will go up there, so I am fine using pads at the moment. Um, I have not had a smear test even though I'm 25 because being queer means that I'm much less likely to get cervical cancer. I was also the age where I could have the um, inoculation against it. Um, so it has been basically decided that when the doctors think it's necessary, I will have an operation to be put to sleep and have it done while I'm asleep. Um, and that's something that we've kind of negotiated and works out fine, so that gets around the medical side of things. And in terms of sex, I can have very fulfilling sexual relationships with people, turns out, without having anything inside my vagina. So that's also working out. So for me, it's something that I am very comfortable with not having treatment for, and I feel like treatment would not really be that useful for me. It would just be making me prescribed to this idea of like what I should be doing with my body and now that I understand it I feel a lot more comfortable with it. Having said that, if this is something that you feel like you need treatment for or you want treatment for, um, I will leave some links below and I really hope that in the comments anyone who has had any experiences of this will leave their stories and kind of talk about what's going on with them so that people can kind of find each other and maybe find some support and some stories that are similar to theirs. If you would like to help support me make these videos, I'm going to leave a link to my Patreon below along with links to my social media so you can find me all over the internet and until I see you next time, bye.